Hey guys, Ryan here. Um, I'm just going to be going through some of the videos I meant to make earlier this week, but some of the topics just I really didn't want to talk about. Mainly, uh, Pocono. Why? I mean, Pocono. I feel like that should be a track that can make exciting racing, but it doesn't. Ever. And this new package didn't help it at all. There was next to no pass. Like, the cars got single file really quickly. There was next to no passing minus the tire concerns. Like, minus some. Um, like, if someone had fresher tires. Um, and even then, it was still tough to pass the leader. Um, so, yeah. Overall, just not a good race. And um, we actually saw that with... Um, the TV rating was actually down. Um, um, yeah, the TV rating was down about 2%. Um, percent, um, despite it was still the most watched motorsport of the weekend. Uh, I think it was, rank, like, it was ranked first above, um, I believe it was, yeah, the IndyCar Detroit. With an estimated um, 2.4 million viewers. Um, estimated for um, watching it. Now, ticket sales, the interesting thing, for especially for a race that was basically guaranteed to get rained out or rain shortened, um, ticket sales went up for the Pocono race, but they went, but the TV ratings went down. I don't know why that happened, but hey, more people are going to the track. Hey, can't complain. Um, but yeah, the track is definitely not the best suited for this style of, um, like for the, for just, um, kind of like this NASCAR stock car style. Um, so just kind of wanted to talk briefly about how, I mean, you really, the different, that this package wasn't really that great. Now I think upping the horsepower and taking away some of the, um, Things that create dirty air, such as maybe shortening the rear spoiler and to around where it was in 2014, I think it was, 2014, 13, maybe even 2017 level, um, rear spoiler height, somewhere in that range. And then also taking off the splitter, which really creates a lot of the dirty air, which I know a lot of people harp on that one. I don't think they can, right? They can do that for the by the July Pocono race, or even by um, 2020, I think that's going to have to be a 2021 thing, taking the splitter off for some reason. Um, and actually, while we're talking about the Aero package, um, kind of leads actually as a good segue, but um, but yeah, so my kind of idea is, how about upping the horsepower at Pocono and some of these other flatter tracks, um, like Pocono, like Indianapolis, to kind of encourage that road course style of shifting a lot, like shifting the clutch, like having to shift the shifter down a gear to try and um, get the highest RPMs possible. Um, I think that that, that even though Pocono wasn't the most interesting track before, the shifting still made it an interesting, was an interesting part of it. So I think if you just take the splitter off, um, which again, I said that would probably be a hard one to do until 2021. Um, but the um, short, shortening the rear spoiler down to maybe 2017 levels and then upping the horsepower, maybe even past 750 where it's been, maybe move it up to 800, 850 if they can do that without raising the cost too much for the um, teams. But going on from there, Sorry, just moving my notes page down because I've got um, notes on the second thing. Um, we had, and um, we had that Adam Stern, who also reported on the, um, who reports on the what's it, the um, TV rating and everything, that Delara um, and and NASCAR our executives have been in talks and are now working on a collaboration between the two to. Bring a cost-effective package for NASCAR. And as soon as I hear that, two things come to mind. First off, Delara makes great, very safe chassis for IndyCar. But they also um, are talking about making 
NASCAR spec racing, which I personally prefer to see um, the teams do what they can to, um, like, seeing the teams be able to do their own things to the cars rather than just basically being set, given a car to go race. So, but overall, I'd say that Delara, I mean, there are pros and cons to both sides of it. Pro, Delara makes um, very safe, very, um, actually would be extremely safe chassis for NASCAR cars because they don't go nearly as fast as um, as um, Indy cars do. But you would also have to make sure you um, that they can take multiple hits because while, yes, an Indy car chassis, if it hits the wall, I mean, those things can break really quick. And they're going 220 miles an hour into the wall. But with NASCAR, you've got guys bumping doors for 200 or so laps or more. 200 or more laps around for a good three or so hours. Kind of just banging doors, banging chassis. You'd have to make sure it's able to survive repeated impacts like that. So... Those are kind of my thoughts on that. Um, and then one of the other things that I just heard people kind of mentioning, um, and I just heard this like um, earlier today, is that people are now talking about a um, IndyCar um, NASCAR Cup Series doubleheader. Of course, there's the Truck Series, um, the um, the Truck Series race um, this weekend, which actually. Um, there's some more news about that, which I'll talk about later uh, on in the video. We got a very full episode today. Um, but yeah, so um, we're going to be going through um, the IndyCar, but with the IndyCar Cup Series doubleheader. This was actually suggested last year. That the um, talks were really close to working out, but it just fell apart at the last stage. Um, to the point where, to the point where they um, were actually about to schedule one for Chicago Land, so the IndyCar and Cup Series at Chicago Land, which I thought that was going to be an amazing idea. I thought that was an amazing idea, but now it sounds like there are other tracks that have also said, "Hey, IndyCar, NASCAR, how about let's do this here." Two of the biggest ones being Texas Motor Speedway, which I mean they're both kind of average races, so wouldn't be neither one would potentially they would probably both be not great, um, which could be amazing, which means it could add up to being a, a pretty good race, or it could be just meh, who cares, because it's not a spectacular race for either one. Then there's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and hold your horses, they aren't talking about pairing up the Indy 500 and the Brickyard 400. They're talking about potentially pairing up the Brickyard 400 with the Indianapolis Road Course, the Indy GP, which I think that that would be a... Um, neither one of those races are particularly spectacular either. The Brickyard 400, I mean, it's really not been great the last few years. And the... Um, Oh, what do I, what is it called? The Indy GP. I mean, there's only ever been two winners of the Indy GP. Um, yeah, Simon Pagano and Will Power are the only two winners ever. Um, and I think they each have like three wins apiece at it. So, um, that those races wouldn't necessarily be the best. But now here's probably the most interesting part about it. What about if we took the um, NASCAR stock cars and put them on the road course, run like a 400-kilometer race? Um, so you could still call it the Brickyard 400, but it would be 400 kilometers, not 400 miles. Um, then you would have the Indy GP, and they've even mentioned this, maybe even pairing IMSA up and having IMSA Friday night, uh, or... Yeah, having IMSA Friday night because they can run night road courses without a huge amount of lights. And then having Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon 
having the Indy GP on Saturday and then having the NASCAR Cup Series on Sunday. Of course, the biggest kind of debacle in all of this is usually um, when it's talking about who's going to be the sideshow versus main event, and that's actually what the problem was um, with the um, double header um, that they tried to schedule for Chicagoland was that neither one really wanted to be the um, kind of the second, the other, the um, other series as opposed to the main show. So yeah, there's that, but I think that it's it would be a big boost for both of those events if they did that. Maybe even for 2020. Um, especially since we know actually um, later this month there has r- been rumors that there's going to be an Xfinity test at the um, Indianapolis Road Course. So late June, early July, maybe changing that for the Xfinity Series for 2020. And then the um, Cup Series could go there in 2021, which is the rumored year that this um, Indy car um, doubleheader thing would happen. And that would be pretty cool. Pocono was another track that people have been kind of throwing the name around. But again, as I said, um, Pocono race is in NASCAR really aren't good. And then the Indy car races, they're either not great or someone nearly dies. Or does die in Justin Wilson's case. Um, but yeah. Like that's kind of my issue with them doing it at Pocono. is just the fact that the racing for both series would either be really not great. Or someone would um, potentially get injured in the IndyCar race. So uh, that's why I would say no to Pocono. And then um, now Circuit of the Americas I think would be another interesting one. Like, if they take out one of the Texas Motor Speedway dates for the Cup Series and run a doubleheader at the Texas Motor Speedway and, or not the Texas Motor Speedway, at the Circuit of the Americas road course, one on Saturday and one on Sunday, I think that would be pretty interesting. And I think they'd work both going there around the same time with the um, NASCAR schedule. Not sure how much that would conflict with the uh, perfect schedule that I made. Um, and a video on, um, link to that will be in the description if I remember, but, um, but yeah, and some of you guys who probably know the cup ske- or know the, um, IndyCar schedule pretty well knows that this weekend there is a race going on, which is actually at Texas Motor Speedway, which is a double header between NASCAR and IndyCar already, but that is the NASCAR camping world, or er, NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series, not Camping World. Man, I'm a year behind. Um, but yeah, so it's the camping, so it's the trucks and the um, and the Indy cars that are gonna be there. Um, so you've got um, so yeah, so I'm excited to kind of watch that on TV. Of course, I don't live close enough to any tracks really to go see them until I head down to. Um, to Bristol and hopefully Richmond later this year. So, um, looking to definitely try and meet up with some of the people. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be moving out of here, for, heading off to college. So, my videos might end up becoming a lot less studio-like. I won't have two monitors probably going at once. Um, but yeah, so I've got that um, going on, and then um, but yeah, so with the truck series news, we do have. The um, truck race at Texas, while I, while the Cup and Xfinity are both at Michigan this week, and um, and I am actually very excited to see the 51 truck. It's a Toyota, but it's gonna be driven by none other than Greg Biffle. The Biff is back, and I was I I liked Greg Biffle when he ran. Like I was always a Greg Biffle. Um, I was really kind of a Roush fan. Which was kind of sad because um, Rush really went downhill pretty much after I started watching. So, um, but yeah, I loved seeing Carl Edwards and his backflips. He's probably up there on my all-time favorites drivers list. Man, I'm trying to think of all-time favorite drivers now. And then Greg Biffle was definitely up there as well. Um, but yeah, I love both of those guys. 
Um, but yeah, so Greg Biffle coming back to NASCAR to the truck series, driving for Kyle Busch in the 51 truck. And I think he could probably win this race, to be honest. He's in one of the best trucks in the garage. And he's also um, going to be... Um, he's also not... He's not just in the best truck in the garage. He's also going to be in um, probably the... He's probably got some of the best teammates in the garage, despite what Kyle Busch might say about them. I think Harrison Burton and Todd Gilliland are doing pretty good. Not necessarily Kyle Busch levels are good, but if he weren't taking all the best equipment, maybe Harrison Burton or Todd Gilliland would be doing really good. Maybe one of them would be a five-time race winner this season. Probably not, but... Um, but yeah, and then the other bit of Truck Series news, which just came out um, yesterday, I think it was, um, Ross Chastain announced that he is going to be driving for Truck Series points. Um, so he basically switched from Xfinity points to, cut, or to Truck points. And that actually brings me to the other thing I wanted to talk about, was I'm going to be talking about the um, standings. Um, for all three series, um, so Chastain effectively went from, um, effectively went from being a non-factor in the, um, uh, one second, went from being a non-factor in the championship in the Xfinity series to being probably the favorite to win the truck title if he can get a win. Um. But yeah, so Kyle Busch picking up his fourth win of the season. Not really a big surprise that he's going to be, um, that he's now still leading the points standings for the regular season champion. Joey Logano, Chase Elliott are both, are both up there. Um, and then I think the cut line, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the cut line is Kyle Larson and Jimmy Johnson. With Newman, Paul Menard, and Stenhouse kind of on the outside looking in. While guys on the inside looking out are Larson, Jones, Byron, and Daniel Suarez. Which, I mean, that's fairly expected because Suarez has been running about... I mean, they're basically points are right about where they've been running. Uh, now, the Xfinity Series is going to be interesting because... Right now, the play the top twelve are basically your playoff lock already, um, unless unless and this would not be a surprise to me, but unless um, Brandon Jones sucks terribly from here on out, which again wouldn't surprise me a huge amount because he is not, in my opinion, I don't think he's the best. I mean, he's certainly not the best driver in the series. That's Christopher Bell or Tyler Reddick. No, um, but he's definitely not living up to his equipment. But we've got Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, Cole Custer at the top of the um, playoff standings, which I think those are the only three regulars that have wins. Oh, wait, nope, and that. Um, but yeah, so we got um, Ryan Sieg. Um, <laughs> actually, it was the Chastain news was so interesting that, or so recent that now. Yeah, the first guy out of the playoffs is going to be Greg Galding once they get Chastain out of there. So right now, um, it's still up there as um, Chastain's going to be in. But that'll get removed as he's going to trucks. And now Brandon Jones, Ryan C., Justin Haley, Mike Lynette, Noah Gregson, John Hunter Nemechek, um, Chase Briscoe, Tyler or Tyler Reddick, Justin Allgaier, Austin Sindrick, Cole Custer, and Christopher Bell will be your top 12 going for the championship. Um, and then heading over to the trucks, um, we have got um, Grant Infinger, <laughs> Stuart Friesen, Brett Moffitt, Ben Rhodes, and Matt Crafton, the top five all in points. All with all winless in 2019. But then we go down to Johnny Sauter and Justin Hale, or no, yeah, and Justin, uh, no, Austin Hill, sorry, um, Austin Hill, who both have wins. And then we got T Todd Gilliland, who's currently in, 
with Harrison Burton, Sheldon Creed, um, and a couple of others that are all looking to get in. And that's why I think that it's likely that Chastain could, in theory, point his way up. Because the guy that currently holds the spot that he would need to take for a win to count to get him in is 20th place just um, Jesse Little. Which, I didn't even know he ran a race this season. So, I guess Justin or Jesse Little has run some races and he's currently in 20th spot. So, a win would lock him in. But if Chastain outpoints him and gets a win, which I think that's pretty likely, um, then um, Chastain would be able to lock himself in. But he can't use any of the points that he's earned from his first top, his his first eight top tens of the regular season, or his win at Kansas that he got a few weeks ago. So he will need another win, and it'd be very consistent to get back up in that top twenty. I don't think the top 20 in points is a problem. It's just going to be getting that win. Because he's... So I'd say the Truck Series the rest of the season is going to be must-watch because the amount that... Um, the amount that um, Chastain has had to put... Um, the truck... The amount of tough spots and stuff the truck has had to go into for him to be in contention to win races including to win that one race at Kansas. I mean, he's had to do stuff with that truck I didn't think you could do with anything, with even a cup car against trucks. Um, so, yeah, he's... Eh. I mean, he's literally had to go all the way up to the wall and all the way down to the white line searching for how to work that truck. So, I'd say truck series is going to be must-watch, especially this weekend with Greg Biffle. Um, and Chastain's points going over there. But yeah, so I think that's pretty much all I had to talk about in this video. It was a jam-packed episode today. Um, but yeah, so Cup Series at Michigan. My thoughts are it's going to be about the same as Auto Club. I think it's going to be a good race, but, um, but of course, weather will depend on it as well. Like, we don't know if it's going to be a bright sunny day yet or not for Sunday, so... I guess we'll see you guys when we finish watching that race. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.